Sam Eggington defeats Frankie Gavin via 8th round TKO. First of all, I have to say this was a very good fight. Definitely the best fight I've ever seen Frankie Gavin involved in. He's normally in stinkers. But this fight right here was very entertaining viewing. The, for me, the reason why Eggington ended up coming out on top was partly stylistic. But I think a lot of it also has to do with Frankie Gavin's poor conditioning. I don't want to take anything away from Eggington, but Frankie Gavin's issue with getting in shape has been career long. And in this fight right here, to me, he seemed to gas and his midsection really wasn't in the kind of condition that it should have been in. He came in, I believe, three pounds overweight for this fight. So if he had a properly conditioned midsection like top level fighters do, he might have been a bit more durable in the midriff. Now, don't get it twisted. Even the guy with the best six pack abs in the world can get stopped off a body shot. But I'm just talking about the overall way that Gavin was worn down systematically. I think you need to be as durable as possible in the midsection. And Frankie Gavin has never been that. And coming in three pounds overweight suggested that he wasn't in particularly good condition. And that is a problem when you're going up against somebody like Eggington with that relentless pressure that he applies. He managed to drop Frankie Gavin. I think it was in the second or third round with a straight right hand. It was a flash knockdown. Gavin wasn't particularly hurt. It was more the body shots which came after that that really hurt Frankie Gavin. After climbing up off the floor from that knockdown in the second or third round, whenever it was, Gavin actually battled back very well. And for me, got the better of the remainder of the round. But nothing he was hitting Eggington with was hurting him. And that was an issue. <laughs> you know, he couldn't get any space. Frankie Gavin likes to box at his own pace. Eggington wasn't allowing that. That's why you have to be in great condition when you're fighting a guy like Eggington. Unless you've got the height and reach on him like a Bradley Skeet, then you better be in great condition. Frankie Gavin wasn't in great condition. He had the ability there. He had the moves to get to Egan and land his shots. He landed plenty of good shots himself. But when it came to moving out the way and avoiding what Eggington was throwing back at him, he wasn't able to do it. Not for any sustained period anyway. And he was dropped again. Actually, it was a standing count that he got. I think it was in the seventh round, which I thought was dubious. I thought the referee was very generous giving Frankie Gavin a standing count there because... I'm not sure that the standing count was even in the rules. I think he gave him a count because he thought that the ropes had kept Frankie Gavin from being knocked down. Uh, maybe I'm wrong about that, if you can correct me, but that's what I believe it was. That's what the commentators seem to indicate, at least. Regardless of that, in the next round, Eggington came out again and pinned Frankie Gavin on the ropes once again. And started raining in body shots and down went Frankie Gavin and the referee stopped it. The referee was close to stopping the fight at several points previously when Eggington had Gavin pinned on the ropes in the exact same fashion. But Gavin threw just enough punches back to, you know, allow the referee to, uh, well, to, to let the referee know he was okay to continue. So it was inevitable, to be honest with you, regardless of that dubious knockdown, the standing count, Gavin was always going to get stopped there. And like I say, it happened in the eighth, but it was a gallant performance in the ring by Gavin. He fought with a lot of heart, but the condition that he came in was poor and all credit due and hats off to Sam Eggington. He came in the professional condition you're supposed to come in. And this was a domestic uh, local rivalry, a local derby, a Birmingham derby. And this was great for Birmingham boxing, by the way. There's not that many boxing shows in Birmingham these days. So to have two pretty high profile Birmingham boxers go at it like this and it turns out to be a good fight it's going to do great things for the sport in the city of Birmingham so yeah a good night for Birmingham boxing a good night for Sam Eggerton bad night for Frankie Gavin can he bounce back from this I don't know he's got a career long record of poor discipline so you know being a top level boxer you've got to live the life you got to love the life. you got to love being healthy. Does Frankie Gavin love the life? You tell me. 
Drop your comments in the comment section below, people. Let me know how you felt about Sam Egerton's performance. What did you feel about Frankie Gavin's performance? What did you feel about the fight? I thought it was one of the best British fights we've seen this year, definitely. And yeah, you know, we'll see where both fighters go from here. Let me know how you feel in the comment section, people. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.